He sort of had a thin face and his upper body with no development in it. And so if you saw him off the field, he looked uh, a little bit uh, thin. <laughs> the most unlikely, even more unlikely than Raymond Berry to be a great receiver. At least Raymond was tall. Jimmy was short, slow, and white. Despite a lightweight physique, Jimmy Orr tipped the scales in his favor and became a heavyweight receiver with the Pittsburgh Steelers and then with the Baltimore Colts. Although he was a quick study on a football field, Jimmy Orr was anything but a student of the game. I was not a great looker at films and uh, oftentimes when it turned the lights out I went to sleep. So I had to use guile and skullduggery to offset lack of speed. Jim never counted the steps. Only thing Jim needed to know was where should I be open and when should I be there. 2.5 seconds, 3.6 seconds, just tell me where you need me to be. Jimmy didn't have blazing speed, but Jimmy had good cutting ability. By being able to cut uh, sharp, he was able to break away and, and then make these great adjustments on the ball. The thing that I uh, remember most about uh, Jimmy Orr was his ability to look back over his head and focus in on a ball that was coming in over his head and be able to pick up the flight of the ball and adjust with his hands as it was coming in over the top. Orr was a running back in college, and his deceptive moves in the open field allowed him to cut through defenses and bleed the most out of every play. It was this surprising facet of his game that made his average per catch the third highest in NFL history. Here's a guy that, you know, if he was playing today, could have a field day against those people over there because they can't touch him. He's playing against guys uh, that would come up and hit him and knock him down and sit on him and dare him to get back up again. I have a funny story about Jimmy. We were playing Philadelphia here in Baltimore, and he got hurt just prior to the half, and they thought he had separated his shoulder or something. In fact, I put my street clothes on to go to the hospital because I figured I was through. I got in line for the x-rays, and there were 17 people in front of me, some of them on stretchers. But they all said, no, you go to the front of the line. So I go to the front of the line, I get x-rayed, and it's warm in there. My shoulder starts feeling a lot better. And uh, so the trainer and myself, two trainers, we go back to the ballpark. Didn't have my jockey strap on, my ankles weren't taped, and I didn't have any pads on except my shoulder pads. So when Jimmy comes into the huddle, doesn't say anything to me, so I said, okay, nuts I says, here's boom, 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 boom. The play worked, and I scored a touchdown in Orsville. Orsville came about uh, because it seemed like in Baltimore, I always caught my touchdown passes in what was the third base corner of the stadium. called the post corner. We call it a bend in our terminology, but he could make people think he was going to the post and then break back to the corner and he could be more wide open than I think anybody I've ever seen. He lulled people to sleep. They'd throw that inside play inside and then he'd break off the inside play and be sitting there and Unitas would always hit him in Oarsville that one, one corner in the, in the end zone in Baltimore when you almost get killed if you catch the ball there. Although he was not God's gift to receivers, Jimmy Orr created a little piece of heaven called Oarsville. It was the final resting place for many a Colt touchdown and a memorial to one of pro football's most underrated players.